Go ahead. I wish I had a, 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 a shock G story, man. Yeah, a couple people said that. Do you have any? But yeah, maybe you can get a train back on the show and have them uh, tell out. some good shock G stories, man. Um, damn. Oh, that's a cold. That's cold, man. It's making me kind of sad that he passed, man. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. I hope it was nothing. I mean, whatever. It's always sad. 57 years old, man. Like you said, our our and I'm going to put him up there because he is instrumental in hip hop. Yeah. Um, our, our people die early, man. They die so early, dude. And you got, you know, like you said, you have the Rolling Stones doing shit at 80 years old with the damn uh, heart machines right next to the stage. You know, I look at, um, I would look today, up today, I think it's Jack Nicholson's birthday, 82, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, uh, my brother was telling me how when Rolling Stones are going on tour, man, they got ambulances with defibrillators already, already greased up and ready to go. In case one of them, you know, jump off something on the stage and, you know, uh, brother barely get an ARP card, man, and he's out of here, you know? Yeah. Um, um, it's, 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 it's sad, Doc. It really is. I, I was talking about this the other day with a friend of mine mm -hmm. about um, our music. You know, I think yeah. we talked about this before. Our music stars, man. The other day was Luther Vandross's birthday. He would have been 70, okay? He'd been Still dead. young. He died before he was 50. God, see it, damn. Mm. Okay, bad as he was, yeah, boy. Okay, you know, Tina Marie just falls over. Michael Jackson, drugs. Prince, drugs. Rick James, drugs. Okay, Whitney Houston, drugs. Okay, all the, I mean, it just that's like the number one killer of black artists is drugs. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and it's just amazing, man, that the, the people who not only did so much for uh, as an artist, individual artist, but they did a lot for a lot of people, man. I mean, Rick James and Prince both had had a legacy of other artists they produced. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, Sheila E. Oh, yeah. You know, Prince had Sheila E. The time. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mary, uh, Prince had married. I mean, uh, Prince had um, Vanity Six. Then, then, then there was Vanity Six. Then it was... Uh, yeah. Uh, Apollonia Six, okay. Apollonia, yeah. I mean, uh, Rick had uh, Mary Jane Girls, Stone City Band, Tina Marie. I mean, you, you don't see that mm. kind of talent being uh, being cultivated these days, you know. Yeah, that's that's something I think that um, the new style of music, the new style of popularity, does not uh, really um, pay attention to talent as much as it does shock value you know what trips me out lonzo is um i listen to everybody's music because i still keep my ear to the street and listen to the young music and everybody literally tries to sound the same nowadays if something's a hit everybody's making a song that sounds like that brooklyn drill chicago drill like whatever back in the day back in our day you wanted to be different yeah. EPMD sounded nothing like NWA. NWA sounded nothing like E40. E40 sounded nothing like Nas. Nas sounded, and I can go on and on. Bone Thugs and Harmony. Everybody wanted a different style, and even in R&B, you know what I mean. The Temptations didn't want to sound like you know, you know, the dramatic or whoever. They everybody had their different sound. You know, um, you had. A, I was telling somebody. Think about think about Northern California artists. Mm -hmm. Versus Southern California artists, two totally different things. Everybody up north is unique in their own sound and own style. Right. Oh yeah, I see where you're going. Northern California and Southern California, pretty much gangbangers. Damn, there it is, right there. Even back in our day, in the '90s, everybody wanted to sound like Dr. Dre. Everybody, everybody, most of the artists, not everybody, most of the artists that came out of LA since, since the '90s have been gang gang related gangsters, whatever the case may be, the most successful ones. Meanwhile, up north, you got I, I don't know the gangs that they have. I don't know if they have the gangs up north. I know they got posties and cliques, but you don't hear them. I don't hear anybody promoting the same things. Right. It's more player. It's more get that money. It's more F these hoes, like, you know, stuff like that. It don't sound like, like E-40. E-40 don't sound like Hammer. Hammer don't right. sound like Digital Underground. Uh, mm -hmm. it just and, and you damn sure not confuse they look okay. Mm -hmm. Nobody got the same look, right? Everybody now they got it, you know, they got a oh man, it's kind of a cookie cutter thing, man. Oh, it works. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a little different. I'm gonna tie my head, I'm gonna tie my braid on the left side as opposed to the right <laughs> side. 
I mean, I'm gonna wear my bandana this way, not that way. Right. You know, and it's re- it's really uh, amazing at the limited amount of creativity that folks still have in the, with all with, with all the technology that we have at the at our disposal right now. I think that's kind yeah. of a shame, man. The people so anxious to get out, they don't take take time to perfect or to create something. They would rather duplicate than create. Yep. Yep. And like you said, you would think with, with all of this technology, I'm sitting in front of a you know six hundred dollar mixing board, and you you would think that everybody would want to have their own sound, but no, they get whatever's the, whatever the hit. Let me go for that. Let me go for that. I was, Chase that money. I was listening today. I would get something to eat, and I heard a record in the radio, a record in the background at the cafe I went to, and the hi hats, the little hi hats. And I remember when Run, or either Run or um, DMC says back in the day, they were so tired of do 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 do. Back in yeah. the day, everybody had to have, have had them high pitch hook lines. Yep. That was yep. at, at, at that era of the, of the G Funk era. You had to yep. have a high pitch hook line on top of your music, and now everybody's got the the hi hats. And but what, what what I don't feel, and I've been trying to I'm trying to understand. From a musical standpoint, not just from an old school, just from a musical standpoint, where's the swing? Where's the groove at? Okay, where's the groove? I mean, where is the you know mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, bump 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 the Snoop you know when when Snoop for real you know you know you 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 can you can get in the car and go yeah I mean even mm-hmm. right now at my age man people think I'm crazy because I'll be in my car I got my hand up I got I'm leaning down I'm done. <laughs> Okay, and that was my era. Even when I go play at clubs, I'm playing for senior citizens, and we rocking to Biggie. Okay, the grandma acting for Biggie. Yep. Okay, grandma acting for Tupac. People, your grandma is acting for Tupac. They not acting for this new shit. And I, mm-hmm. I, I remember how because I again I've always been I've, since since the '90s I ran pretty much a dope club, but that was twenty some years ago. Okay, so you got people that was in their twenties, of thirties, now in their fifties. Okay, yep. they was in their forties, they in their sixties. Okay, and you still got a love for what you was doing back then. You still got a, a serious love for the funk for that era. I mean, uh, even down the Dirty South, man, the P.D. Pablo's and Sierra when she was doing her thing, and I was rocking Club Hall of Fame, and that was like eighty eight. I mean, 2008, 2009, man. Mm-hmm. That shit's still in my playlist right to this day. Yeah. And I, I can't replace that with the I, people. Well, you ought to get some new music. What, what am I replacing it with? Just because you say I need some new music? No. Mm. I can't do that. Yeah. Yeah, there's ODB. nothing like the 90s, man. In my opinion, nothing like the 90s. Come on. ODB. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Daddy, baby, I got you. Daddy, I got Baby, I got you. Oh, baby, I like it raw. ODB was so different. That's that's a perfect example of not wanting to sound like everybody else. ODB was his own thing. There was there will never be another ODB. But if ODB came out in 2020 and, and had a hit, there will be 20,000 rappers around the country trying to do ODB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the sad part about it. Nobody, you know, and even back then, let me say this right here. Even at some point in time, it's a known fact that a good uh, artist will steal, okay? They will, oh, of course. They will steal. They won't. They won't just. They'll borrow, and they'll take something they like and make it their own. Okay. Correct. Um. Well, all the greats do it. All the Kanye greats West. All, all of them, them. All of them. But they'll take it and make it their own, and they'll take, mm-hmm. take what they did and put a twist on it. Oh, that's pretty dope. And then somebody else take that, take what he did, and put another twist on that to make it even better than what they start. But you got. The bottom line is you have creativity constantly creating. You don't have somebody just taking your taking your sound and just duplicating it. Mm-hmm. Okay? You just you know you, you just can't you can't take DJ Quick sound and duplicate it. You may like yeah. it. he does, but you can't you can't you know you can't do that. You know you can't yeah. do Dre sound. People try, they don't do a good job. Okay, but this new stuff because of it's, it's so. It, the simplicity of what they're doing, man, you know, it's, I'm not going to sit here and hate, I can't do that, but you know, I, no, no, we're out of the target demo, you know, but even then it still sucks. Shit. I don't give a damn. 
<laughs> so uh, what you got coming up next? Uh, anything? What? So we? Oh, well, it's Thursday today. So any uh, any interviews coming up that people should know about? Um, not yet, man. I'm, I'm looking. To, I'm, I'll be looking to book Adrian. I know he was out of town for a while. Um, he, um, I know he was on vacation. It's a hell of a way to come back from come back from vacation. Yeah, man. And uh, who, are, who are some of the other people that he's, uh, you know, Tupac, Digital Underground? Are those pretty much, you know, the main ones that you could think that he's managed, or actually, did he have his hands in a lot more? He actually does more more jazz management than anything else. Oh, okay. Andy Clark been one of his clients forever. Uh yeah, because he does. I've, I've met him. Yeah, he doesn't strike me as a as a, a, a hip hop dude. Never did. Um, Stanley Clark is one of his main clients. Uh, Rodney, Rodney Franklin is it Rodney Franklin? Um, what? Uh, Rodney somebody. That's how I met him. He was working with Rodney Franklin, I think it is. Um, he's another another jazz musician. Uh, when Adrian started working with him after he left, left work, working with me, um, my man just kicked him down a nice fat check to go. Hey man, come on over, do this with me. Do your thing, Doc. I ain't mad at him. So, oh, yeah. um, it is what it is, Doc. It, it, uh, that's what I can think of offhand. He's been uh, talking to a lot of other people, but you, I mean, also I know he manages um, Johnny Guitars, jo- Johnny Guitar Watchings catalog. So he does a lot of stuff when it comes to publishing. And uh, in fact, people usually I refer people that come to me. I refer them to Atrium because I'm busy. I got my hands full. Yeah. He does that. Yeah. We'll end it with this. Montana Max says, and this is the brilliant to hip hop because I was the same way when I was a kid. He said, I remember back when I thought Humpty Hump was Shock G's big brother. Uh-huh. There was a rumor going around that it was two people and it was it was it was such brilliant marketing. And to this day, that nose is going to be infamous. There's a story uh, where he was. Um, I, I know the story behind the nose. He was actually now I'm going to butcher it a little bit, but he was in a, a dollar store. And there was a bunch of uh, like noses, clown noses, pig noses, you know, a, a box of them. And then he was just putting one on. He was like, oh, this is it. And then he said he put that one on and he could just picture and he got into the character with the cigar. And it's like it's like a Groucho Marx nose or something like that. And yeah, that that ended up being his biggest thing. This one dollar nose that he that he found in some box. Which is that's such a dope story. I mean, I'm a hip hop nerd, so I love that shit. And see, that's one thing that a lot of artists uh forget about man that simple at one simple move now i'm quite sure he had to go through some ridicule to break that nose out mm-hmm. okay i'm i'm i think i want to bet the farm he had mm-hmm. to go through ridicule when he broke out broke out with that nose okay because no matter what you do especially when you step out the box and this is this is i think this is probably one of the problems some of the current artists may have they're so afraid to step out the box to be that 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 few minutes of ridicule that you're going to get because you're not fitting into the today's mold. Okay. Mm-hmm. Most people can't res- res- withstand that little bit of real ridicule you're going to get and they cave and they go right back to what they, to the safe, to the safe zone. Okay. Mm-hmm. They go right back to the safe zone. That's why you got the same kind of lyrics talking about the same kind of shit. If anybody talk about anything other than booties, drugs, shooting, killing, um, you ain't cool. Okay. Yep. Talk about something real, something that's real. People want to hear. Oh man, how you gonna talk that preach that? No, 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 no. Take that heat. Take that heat. Okay, that heat. Heat is what makes iron stronger. Okay, mm-hmm. and you will see people melt around you. Take yep. that, and people around you will melt you into your into your ways. But if you keep mm-hmm. on, you, all you're gonna do is go into somebody else's mold. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's why Outkast is one of my favorite groups of all time. They were they did shit different, and like you said, they probably had a bunch of people around them. Like, what are you doing? Nah, don't put that on. That looks crazy. Nah, dog. No, don't sing that song that way. Nah, I like the way you move. Nah, don't sing that shit. And here we are, ten million records sold later, and, and one of the biggest groups ever. But um, another Gemini. You know that, don't you? Ah, damn. See another one. You know Makes that. all the sense in the world. Did not know that, my man. <laughs> One of my favorite rappers, dude. Yes, to this day. I yeah. So, um, Roses. Uh, oh, yeah. Like, boo, boo, yeah. Yeah. 